Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials. Today is the fifth tutorial in the Intermediate Java Programming Series. Today we are going to be continuing our adventures into the Windows Form applications and explore the realm of action listeners which will add functionality to our buttons and text windows as well as any other items that we decide to add to the form. Um, basically what they do is they search for any action that occurs within the actual buttons or slider bars or whatever we assign them to and then it executes a certain a certain set of code that we program in depending on what what happens so the first thing I want to do before we get into this is I want to jump into the main method and add one line of code incrementer.set title well, let's just set that to incrementer you can name that whatever you want. Just save that off. We're going to run the program. And as you can see, we now have incrementer up here in the, the, the title bar right here, which is something we didn't have beforehand. And as you can notice, this is the program from the last tutorial. So we have the text window. The buttons still don't do anything. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fix out this tutorial, though. The next thing we want to do is we want to create two new files. In one of them, we want to import java.awt.event.asterisk and import java.x.swing.asterisk. If I could find the semicolon button. And then we're going to go ahead and save that off. Actually, no, let's not save that yet. And then in this one, we just want to import java.awt.event.asterisk. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump back to the one with Java X Swing imported, because this is going to be the most difficult out of the two action listeners that we're going to be dealing with today. Uh, we need to do uh, public class plus one action. Um, obviously, this is going to be attached to the plus one button, and the next one is going to be called exit action, and it is going to be attached to the exit button. So pretty easy stuff. Then we're going to implement action listener. Now I know implement is a new term for us. We haven't really gone over implementation yet. But we have gone over extension, which is in the same family. Extension and implementation are both in the inheritance family. So the reason why we use implementation here is because this is an interface. It is a non-standard class. An interface is a special class that is only allowed to have certain types of variables, so they're only allowed to have constant variables, and they're only allowed to have method entries. They're not allowed to have, like, structs, which we'll go over in a later, on a later date, or uh, procedures, or any of that other stuff. So that's why we use implementation. Uh, we won't be able to extend action listener because it's a non-standard class, but in most other cases you can extend whatever you are trying to uh, inherit. So moving forward with that, we have a couple variables that we want to declare. We have an instance of our practice form. We're just going to call that incrementer just to be consistent. And we have a string variable that we're going to call temp text storage I need to call that out and we also have an integer variable called temp value storage and then once we're finished with all that we can start on our very first method which is public void action performed and that it takes in one action event and I'm just going to self title that a so, what do we have here? We have an instance of our actual practice form, and then we have a string that stores some temporary values that we're going to be importing from the text field that's in our form, and we have an integer value which will be doing the bulk of the math and then re-outputting. So, we can just move forward, jump into our action performed, and this is required in every action listener. It is the only method inside the action listener interface. We are required to use it and this is what looks for whatever is being clicked or pushed or moved or whatever it is that we're looking for. So we're going to go temp 
text storage. And please keep in mind this code is not going to be extremely efficient. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fluff, but it's just so that we can take a step-by-step -step approach and not lose anybody in the process. So temp text storage incrementer dot output tf dot get text. Okay, so what are we doing with this line of code? We are accessing the instance of our form, and we are accessing the information pertaining to the actual text field, and then we are grabbing the text from that text field, and then assigning it to the temporary text storage. So basically what happens is, is whatever is in that text field at the time they click the plus one button, we are going to grab it and put it into a temporary string. Then we are going to try. This is a try-catch statement. We've briefly gone over those in the past. Um, we haven't really touched them much because the, the level of programming that we do in these tutorials doesn't necessarily call for them too often. But we're going to go ahead and go temp value storage equals integer. This is a wrapper class. I know we're going over a whole bunch of different kinds of classes right now. The integer with a capital I and the full title spelt out is a wrapper class. Basically every primitive comes with a default wrapper class that has a couple different kinds of methods that allow you to do certain type, certain kinds of functionality with those, uh, those primitives that you wouldn't normally be able to do or you'd normally have to write obnoxious amounts of code to do. In this case we're going to go dot pars and, and then go temp text storage. And basically what this is, is it's called uh, value casting. We are casting whatever is inside this string to an integer, which is why we need a try-catch statement. Because if it, they enter anything that do, doesn't necessarily, isn't an, exactly a number, it's going to cause problems. We're going to get some form of error. If they enter a number that's too high, we're going to get an object out of bounds or a stack overflow. And if they enter something that's too small, we're going to get the same thing. If they enter a letter of any kind or anything that's a non-number, then we're going to get a variable mismatch, I believe is what it is. So we want to catch all of those and make sure none of them happen, because those are all uh, program crashing errors. So we're going to catch exception ex. You can call that exception e if you like. It's entirely up to you. And once we catch the exception, we're going to use the Java X swing. Uh, library that we had imported earlier to import a J option pane. And this is going to we're going to access the method inside that called show message dialog. And then we need to set a spawn location relative to just like we normally would with an actual form. We're going to set that to null just like we normally would with an actual form. And we're going to set give them the message. We're going to say the base value you have entered is either too large, too small, or not a number. And the reason why we can generalize this little message right here is because they're going to know if it's too large. The, the largest number I believe is like 2.197 billion and the smallest number is negative 2.197 billion or something like that for integers. So they're definitely going to know if they get too large with the integer values, which is why we can tell them that. And obviously if you put Q into the text field and try to add it as a number, you're going to know that it's not a number. So this solves all of our problems. And then the issue with catchphrases is that they just correct or attempt to correct. They perform whatever's inside the, uh, the braces and they just move on to the next line of code. So if we don't correct the issue inside this catch statement, it'll continue to be an issue. So we're just going to go temp value storage is equal to negative one. The reason why we do that is because once we're finished with this try catch statement, we're going to go temp value storage plus plus. Why do we do that here? Because we are sending, we are casting the string to an integer and then we want to increment that integer by one and then return it 
dot output tf dot set text integer and we're using the wrapper class again to now we're casting the integer to a string to string temp value storage Oopsies. okay so we are sending the string value we're casting it into an integer at least we're checking to make sure that it's cast to an integer if it's not we're going to set the value to zero um, we're going to set the value to negative one then regardless of what happens it always get, it gets incremented by one and then we're going to reaccess the text field inside the instance of our our form and we're going to set the text in that text field to whatever is inside that integer and we're going to do that by casting the integer to a string value. So that ends that for this method right here, this class. So we can just save that off and forget about it for a few seconds. And then we need to jump into our next uh, action listener, which is going to be the exit action, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And this one, all we have to do is go public class exit action implements. pretty much the same procedure the whole way through public void action performed action event a the reason why we don't have to worry about overlapping titles is because this is in a completely different class and a completely different method for that matter so we don't need to worry about those um, isolated variables strictly for the method overlapping so and then all we need to put in here is system dot exit zero save that off and then before we jump to conclusions and execute the program we need to attach them to the actual buttons themselves so plus one action first plus one button dot add action listener and then we're going to go new plus one action easy enough right Make sure to put your parentheses in there because it is a class. It can inherit stuff. So, so plus one button dot add action listener new plus one action. Easy enough. Exit button dot add action listener new exit action. And now we should be able to save that off. Compile it. Everything compiled successfully. You can see by compilation complete jump into the main method and run this sucker. Now all we need to do is test one, see that increments properly. Each time we click it, it goes up one. Now what if we were to throw in a queue? It's going to give us this message. The base value you have entered is either too large, too small, or not a number. That's obviously not a number. It has a queue in it. So we're going to push OK. That resets to zero, and we can continue incrementing. The last thing we need to test is the exit button. You can tell the uh, program has terminated itself because the compiler itself has reset the interface actions. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I know we've gone over quite a bit of new, new uh, material today. As for next tutorial, we are going to be going over um, additional functionality inside the forms, as in uh, menu bars, which we have yet to cover, as well as some of the other objects that you can add to the forms themselves to add in a little bit of additional functionality, and I will show you where you can find other objects. Otherwise, um, I look forward to seeing you next tutorial. Have a great day.